Hello and welcome to everybody on Cloud Fitness. So in today's video, we are going to check about the Microsoft Fabric pricing and how we are actually going to get charged when we are using Microsoft Fabric. So let's move ahead with the video, but do remember to like, share and subscribe as well as connect with me on the LinkedIn and Instagram and I'm going to leave the link in the description box. So as we go ahead with the, you know, Microsoft Fabric pricing, the very first thing that we need to understand is what are we getting charged for, right? So I have already discussed about the fabric, what it is in my previous video. And I've also explained you guys that especially in Microsoft Fabric, we have one leg, right, which is the storage. And you are charged for the storage. You are also charged for the compute, right? So if I go back to one of my uh, slides, this was one of the slides that I shared in my previous video. So you can actually see that uh, we are charged for this one leg storage as well as we are charged for the server disk compute because the data integration, data engineering, real time analytics, they need a compute, right? So these are the two things for which you are majorly charged for. Now, usually what happens is that is equivalent to capacity in fabric right so all your compute is nothing but it is called as capacity so you have to remember this specifically this particular term which is nothing but the capacity 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 is nothing but the compute cost that is associated now uh, imagine you are in an organization now if you are in an organization you will have a specific tenant right now there are two scenarios you are in a company A or you are in a company B, right? It can be any domain company, it can be retail, it can be healthcare, anything. Now in, in company A and company B, there can be a difference of multi-tenant and a single tenant organization. So if your organization is single tenant organization, which means uh, basically all your services are within one Azure tenant, then it's a single organization tenant. But Comparison is if you look at the company B, right, it has a multi tenant architecture, right? So, in this case, if you look over here, there's a comparison that has been built. Now, if you look over here within an organization of company A, you have something called as capacity, and within capacity, you have workspaces. Now, uh, we guys have already created a uh, fabric workspace. All right, you already know we have created a fabric account and uh, let me in fact go to the fabric account. You will actually see that if I go to the fabric, let me just click on anything. Let's say click on data engineering over here, right? So if I click on my workspace over here, it is going to show me if I have a workspace or not. If I click on new, right, I can actually go ahead. If I go to the workspaces and I can click on new workspace, the moment I click on new workspace, I can create a workspace over here and then you, I can create a data pipeline, everything within that particular workspace. So that is what a workspace is all about, right? Now, each workspace is tied to a particular capacity because if you're creating a data pipeline within a workspace, it has to run somewhere, right? It has to have a compute. So that compute is actually provided by the capacity. Now, the key point to note over here is one workspace can be uh, one uh, so first of all the thing that you have to notice that one capacity can be linked to multiple workspaces right so if you look at this us capacity it is linked to multiple workspaces over here now again if i go back to the portal and if you see over here if i go back and uh, let me go over here and let me go to the admin portal Right now, if I go to admin portal over here, you will actually see that if I click on the trial right now, I'm using trial. That's why uh, I have clicked over here and you can see over here. So this capacity is tied. This is the capacity. And if I look at the workspaces assigned to this capacity, right, which workspace is assigned to the capacity. OK, so each workspace can be assigned to a capacity where all the workloads will actually run. So this is exactly how it works. So now if I go back. This is pretty much, you know, the architecture kind of a thing where you understand how the capacity 
would work in fabric so now you can see if you have a multi tenant company then in that case what can happen is you can have multiple capacity within the same tenant right you can have a single capacity or you can have multiple capacity so now if you see over here right military section tenant here you have two capacities you can create as many capacities as you want right you can create as many capacities as you want within a single tenant you might have one capacity you might have multiple capacity now each capacity each workspace is linked to a particular capacity where it will run and that is what you are charged for now what you can do is now if you see these sections right military section tenant commercial tenant so this is nothing but it is more of a a segregation of tenant you know where your organization would work now this tenant uh, will internally it might need four different types of capacity based on the uh, it might need four different types of capacity based on you know the usage part of it you know based on how you want to segregate the uh, you know the pricing part of it right so let's say for example uh, you might you might segregate workspaces as well like maybe the bi workspace maybe you can say the data engineering workspace the data science workspace or you might segregate it something like marketing sales and finance based on different different domains now each of these domains might use a capacity that depends on your organization on how you assign it so this is what you are charged for now even before we move to the pricing part of it i would also like to explain one more part so if you look at the fabric right so earlier uh the power bi the free power bi workspace right the free power bi account that we used to have that is equivalent to microsoft fabric free right now so if i go to this right if i go to the power bi pricing over here you can actually see this power bi in microsoft fabric free account this has been renamed actually earlier it was power bi free account so now it is nothing but it is power bi microsoft fabric free account so if you have a power bi free account then you are automatically you can use all the features of microsoft fabric by default you can use it so this is what even we are using right now in our current demo the one which i have created in my previous videos we are using now this free account right now for our workloads right so uh, this is the first part then the second thing is if you look at the existing license of power bi right existing license of power bi is still there if you want to use only power bi specific feature then power bi pro so if you already have a power bi pro license then you will not have any fabric uh specific uh capabilities when you are using power bi okay so when you are using power bi pro license then in that case you will not have any fabric related or uh, fabric specific capabilities assigned to you however if you have power bi premium right if you have power bi premium then in that case if you click on this see additional features of power bi premium right you can see this power bi premium per capacity includes microsoft fabric so power bi premium right it already includes all the features of your uh, fabric so if you are already using power bi premium then you are good to go you do not have any issues because you will by default be uh, open to all the uh, uh, you know uh, all the capabilities that microsoft fabric has but in case of power bi pro you do not have microsoft fabric um you know specific capabilities now similarly when you talk about uh the pricing part now if i go to the microsoft fabric pricing calculator right you guys can i will leave the link in the description box you guys can go ahead and check both these two links so you can actually see you can select any region of your choice so i have randomly chosen central us dollar and display pricing now the pricing can be displayed based on hour as well as on month so now let's check month right now or uh, let me just change the region let me say west us2 uh for the better understanding and then microsoft fabric capacity pay as you go or reservation so there are two ways basically in which you can pay which is pay as you go or reservation right 
for pay as you go what you can simply do is you can go to the azure portal now when you go to the azure portal let me in fact show you now the moment you go to the azure portal you can simply click on microsoft fabric over here and when you click on microsoft fabric you can click simply click on create fabric capacity what it will do it is going to create pay as you go fabric capacity for you right but you still need to have power bi premium to use it but uh, by default in the premium anyway you will get microsoft fabric associated to it if you want to add capacity to it you can add it via this azure portal using pay as you go service now if i go back right to the pricing part over here you can see, see simply say you simply see what exactly it is saying pay as you go or reservation you can get any of these two right now uh if you look at the benefits of fabric capa uh, capacity right so essentially what uh, uh, this is what i have explained even in my previous video that fabric capacity is nothing but a single compute power right it is single compute power now if i go to this particular slide what exactly it is doing it is nothing but serverless compute that you see over here whether you are using kql whether you are using spark anything right or you're using sql even in all of these cases there is a single compute that you are paying for right so if you want to read this you can definitely go ahead and read this as well and but the major pricing point is over here right so you have something called as capacity units this is what this is nothing but this is the power of your uh sku so each each capacity unit is linked to an SKU and each SKU has a capacity unit which is nothing but which is equivalent to your compute power. So if you look at this capacity unit 2, 4, 8, 16. So it is in the multiples of 2 uh, starting from 2 and then you can see pay as you go per month. So you are going to pay $262 per month if you do pay as you go right but if you do a reservation then in that case it will be 156 dollar a month now in this pay as you go you can stop the capacity as well when you want to now this particular charge is based on uh, the assumption that it is running 24 by 7 and even this reservation but in this reservation even if you are running it 24 by 7 you are going to get charged little lesser than this 262 so in most of the cases it be, uh, you know it makes more sense to have a reservation uh, but it mostly depends on your use case. So as you can see, the SQ starts, starts and it ends over here, F2048. But remember one thing over here, the main point is F64. So the premium Power BI premium workspace is equivalent to your F64, which has 64 capacity units. In Power BI, it had eight cores. Power BI Premium had 8 cores and now this is equivalent to F64. So the premium workspace, in the premium workspace you were getting exactly this much capacity right now. Right? And if you want to lower down, this is less than the existing premium workspace. And similarly, if you want, you can see there is the increased capacity from F128 to 2048 depending upon your workloads. So this is about the pricing of your capacity units that you need to check and understand. But uh, remember that if you go for anything less than F64, it means that uh, you will not be able to, uh, you know, the users will not be able to view your Power BI reports, right? Uh, but if you go more than F64, then in that case, the end users will actually be able to see your reports as well, even if they do not have, uh, you know, the same uh, reserved instance or the same instance of Power BI. Now, apart from this, you can also check one lake storage because you are also charged for this storage. Now, if you want to read again, you can go over here and read this benefits of one lake storage because there is only single copy of data across all analytics engine of fabric without moving or duplicating the data. So you're not duplicating the data. Everything is stored at the one layer itself and you are getting charged for it. Now, if you see the charge is pretty much very less, you know, as usual storage is very cheap these days. So one lake storage per month is costing you 0 0.02 dollars per GB. Right. So this is pretty much a very less one leg storage cost. 
But then the other thing is mirroring. Remember this thing mirroring. Now in this case, if you are ingesting the data, now one lake is an open format. I told you earlier, it's an open format. Now, if you want to access the data outside, from outside, if you want to replicate the data to your one lake, right? And you want to make sure that the data is always updated in one lake. You are mirroring it out from a XYZ database. You are creating a replica in the near real time within the one lake. Then in that case, it is called as mirroring and you will be charged for it. And um, in fact, uh, if you purchase F64, right? We will always get 64 free terabytes worth of storage, right? One lake storage is built only when free mirroring storage limit is exceeded. So if your limit of 64 terabyte increases, right? If your limit of 64 free terabytes increases, then and only then one lake storage is built, right? So I hope you understand this point and also capacity based on your capacity SKU, which we have seen at the top, right? You can see the mirroring cost as well right and uh, the, the mirroring storage as well that you see over here now uh, again the other thing that might come up is the networking so if you are sharing your data right now if i click on the networking over here you can actually see the networking cost as well so if you are doing any intercontinental data transfer then in that case there's a minimal cost associated to the networking as well which you can check here so this is pretty much you know, the uh, cost related to the Microsoft Fabric. I hope you like this particular video. Do remember to like, share and subscribe to my channel and keep enjoying the videos. So thank you so much for being till here.